So this is the prompt that I'm going to give Claude 3.7 Sonnet, which is just to create a simple interactive video game where the user clicks on a coin to flip it. I'm also going to give the same prompt to Gemini 2.5 Pro Experimental. Let's see who makes the better game. So this is the game that was created by Claude 3.7 Sonnet, and this game looks pretty good. The aesthetics are pretty modernised, but let's click it and the coin flipping works. Let's do this again. Why is this always heads? Now there is a tail, so the coin flipping mechanism works pretty well, and it also looks good. The background glow of this is also pretty crazy. And this is the coin flipper game that was created by Gemini 2.5 Pro. The look of the game is pretty bland, but let's see if the functionality makes up for it. The game works okay, but it's not as polished as Claude's version. There's also no counter for heads, tails, or total flips. So I think this round clearly goes to Claude. Now let's create a new chat in Claude and Gemini. First, we'll give Gemini a prompt to create an endless runner video game, similar to Temple Run or Subway Surfers. All the necessary features are included in the prompt. Let's run it and then do the same with Claude. Gemini has already created the code. Now let's download it. So let's see how the demo created by Gemini works. You need to press a key to jump and keep pressing to maintain the jump. You also need to press space to restart the game after failing. The game is quite challenging, but the character's bouncing movement is smooth and there's a functioning score system. Now let's check out the game made by Claude. It looks similar to Gemini's version, but the background design is more appealing. The gameplay feels more optimized with a working pop-up window and a functional button. Also, the background visuals are well done. By the way, every prompt I'm giving to the AI and the results produced are from a single shot generation. That means the AI was able to generate this code using just one prompt. I personally prefer the gameplay of Claude 3.7 Sonnet because I'm actually winning and scoring well in that version. So I'd say this round also goes to Claude 3.7 Sonnet. Now I'm giving Claude a new prompt to create a cube collision simulation. You might think I'm writing all these prompts myself, but actually, I just give ChatGPT a basic idea and it generates the full prompt for me. Then I simply paste it into the AI model. You should also use ChatGPT to make your prompts better. Now let's give the same prompt to Gemini and see which AI does it better. This is the simulation created by Claude. In it, the user can draw and interact with sand, which is a pretty complex task. This simulation was especially difficult because it involves two types of objects and real-world physics. That's probably why it's glitching. The sand simulation isn't functioning properly and the cubes aren't colliding as they should. The collision system is unstable, with the speed of collisions continuously increasing and the sand particles don't interact with the cubes at all. Still, I'm not complaining. This was a tough challenge and even other AI models have struggled with it. Now here's Gemini 2.5 Pro's version. The cube simulation has major issues. The cubes aren't affected by gravity and Gemini couldn't combine the cube simulation with the sand simulation. However, I actually prefer Gemini's sand simulation. It's visually better and feels more fluid. Simulations like these are tough for AI to generate because they require handling two separate systems interacting in real time. But despite the flaws, I still like Gemini's sand simulation more. I think the sand simulation is much harder to execute than the cube simulation. Honestly, neither AI model nailed it, but Gemini 2.5 Pro did a better job with the sand physics, so I'm giving this point to Gemini. Now, let's move on and give both models a new prompt to create a 3D solar system simulation where each planet orbits the sun based on approximate real-world distances and speeds. It's important to include in the prompt that it should be built using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript in a single, complete HTML file so it runs directly in the browser. Claude's attempt at the solar system simulation didn't work at all. Checking Gemini's version, same result. Neither simulation functions correctly, so clearly these AI models can't always handle complex simulations in a single shot. I would normally ask them to fix this simulation, but since the goal here is single shot generations, I won't, so no points for this round. These models clearly struggle with complex simulations. Anyway, let's shift back to games. I'm asking Claude to create a browser version of Flappy Bird to see how well it can replicate the original game's aesthetics. Then we'll give the same prompt to Gemini. Claude's version of the game was a mess. It glitched heavily. The bird's movement wasn't responsive, none of the buttons worked, and the pipes weren't generating correctly. This attempt was a complete failure. Now on to Gemini. After pasting the code, the game actually runs. You can control the bird smoothly, the pipes generate correctly, and the game counts points properly. I lost almost immediately, but hey, at least the game works. So Gemini clearly wins this round. Now the next prompt is to create a 3D interactive city. First, we'll try Claude. 
Claude responded by generating an interactable city. Let me download it in HTML and check it out. So this is the city that was created by Claude. The user movement is relatively smooth, but the city itself feels underwhelming. I had specifically included instructions in the prompt to generate buildings, but none appear in the simulation. It does include a message saying to use the mouse to look around, yet the mouse input doesn't work for changing the user's view direction. There is a functioning button to toggle between night and day, and another to switch perspectives. Although it claims to be in first-person mode, the perspective doesn't actually behave like true first-person. The simulation is glitchy, allowing the user to move through the environment without boundaries, and again the mouse doesn't respond as expected. Meanwhile, Gemini seems to have stalled. It's been generating code for over 10 minutes now, endlessly producing repetitive and non-functional output. I've encountered this glitch with Gemini several times before, so this is another failure for Gemini. Despite Claude's simulation being flawed, at least it generated something. Since Gemini didn't manage to produce a working city at all, this point goes to Claude. Overall, both models struggle significantly with complex 3D simulations. They can usually handle simple 3D objects, but anything beyond that becomes unreliable. That said, Gemini 2.5 Pro still excels when it comes to generating game logic and smaller scale video games. And now let's ask these AI models to create a beautiful looking website. We'll start by giving Claude this prompt. Create a visually stunning, informative website that answers the question, what is happiness? Then we'll give the same prompt to Gemini 2.5 Pro. First up is Gemini's website. It actually looks quite nice. The animations are smooth, but I wasn't a fan of the color contrast. I expected something more vibrant to reflect the concept of happiness. However, the subtle hover animations on the buttons are a nice touch. Since the prompt only asked for an informational website, it's well done for a single shot effort. That said, there's no call to action button, which feels like a missed opportunity. Still, the content is solid and most likely accurate. Overall, this is a big win for Gemini in terms of quick website generation. Now let's look at Claude's version. Personally, I prefer the animations in Claude's site. The color contrast is more appealing and the transitions are just beautiful. There's a tagline, your journey to happiness, which sets the tone nicely. The content updates automatically to reflect different perspectives on happiness, which adds depth. There's a closing message that wraps everything up, just like I asked for. As you scroll, animations and logos appear in a very polished and optimized way. Claude's animations are seriously impressive. So this is also a win for Claude. Gemini 2.5 Pro still holds value with its large context window and affordability. But in the context of this single prompt challenge, Claude takes the win. Claude wins.